Yeah. 
Ne bileyim.
I would like us to rise up um, with a word of prayer, for a word of prayer. Let's bow down. Our kind and loving Father, we want to thank you for everything that you have given unto us. We want to thank you, God, for who you are and for what you mean to our existence. We also want to thank you because you granted us the opportunity to see this new day. In a very special way, God, we come to you asking you to forgive us of the sins that we have done knowingly and unknowingly. We pray that God, may you blot them out of our lives and make us right before your throne of grace. God, we also want to plead that uh, for every plot that the devil has on us this day, may you substitute it with your divine blessings that we may be able to partake of it for the rest of our lives in this world. God, we want to commit this function in your mighty hand, the council's uh, training, that may be in everyone that has supported uh, this function. We want to pray for every little effort that has been employed uh, to see this function a success, that God may you bless uh, every person, each and every person that, that is presented here. We pray for um, our uh, Commissioner General of Prison, his blessing in your mighty hand, that God, may you increase in him the wisdom, even as he leads us, may you, uh, may your divine wisdom rest upon him together with all the directors and every officer that is serving in this department. We also want to bless uh, our sponsors, the sponsors of this function, that God, may you bless the little penny that uh, came from their pockets. And God, uh, may everything go according to how you are fashioned and purposed in our lives, and that when everything will be said and done, we live to glorify your name not only today, but for the rest of our lives in this world, because that is our prayer by faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. And may God bless you. Chief guest of this function, who is a uh, uh, chief at the city secretary, Madam Winnie Fisher, the CEOs of uh, respectable, humble, and uh, willing partners, standing and uh, PSK Kenya, the directors from this headquarters, all other. Person attending here, courtesy of PSK and Starting Bank, members of staff, our EPO bands from the Prison Staff Training College, staff from the Prison Headquarters, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. We want to appreciate the presence of CAS this early morning for this important function here. And uh, my humble duty is to welcome you to this ground. And uh, for the purpose of the service, I want to call upon the Deputy Commissioner General of Prisons to do the official part. Thank you very much, uh, Duncan. Uh, <coughs> our Chief Administrative Secretary, Madam Winnie Mushu, the head of Sunbeam Bank Foundation Kenya, Madam Corinne Baya, the CEO of Operation Services Kenya, Madam Jim Kwadeli, 
the director of non communicable diseases, my roommate of the carpenters, all people who are present, distinguished members of the fourth estate, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Good morning. Good morning again. Thank you very much. This is a good morning. I want to take this opportunity, our Chief Administrative Secretary and all our guests, to welcome you once more to the Prison Headquarters and indeed to the Kenya Prison Service and to equally bring the greetings of our Commissioner General of Prisons, Mr. Wikri Fogala, who is with us spiritually. He had here, here to attend another equally important uh, function, madam, but uh, we have his blessings here. Yeah. So we all we feel safe, we are secure, this is a COVID-free environment, and I know that we are all well, because we have also been blessed by the pastor. Thank you very much. Um, today, it's a very important day for us in the Kenya Prison Service because of what is happening here. This is a very important meeting, a meeting that brings together very important partners addressing matters health from whichever angle you want to look at health, the spiritual health, the mental health, financial health, physical health. So we are here to talk matters health. So it's with great pride and personal pressure that I welcome you here today for the official handing over of four mattresses worth 300,000 for children accompanying their mothers in prisons, 20 computers to facilitate inmates online online learning and to launch cancer screening exercise for prisons officers resourced by our very valuable partner, Standing. This is the message from the Commissioner General of Prisons. Our Chief Guest, Madam, we are greatly honored by your presence here despite your very busy session. Equally, we are indeed privileged and grateful to have both the CEO Standing and the CEO Population Services Kenya. We don't take this for granted. Good people, our worthy partners, you will all agree with me that today's event is yet another opportunity for us to advance communication and social mobilization efforts that are here towards greater awareness about cancer in Kenya. I think it's the number one killer. The scourge, which is indeed a top killer of thousands of Kenyans, is also a growing threat to people's health globally, thus making it a global health concern. Preventing cancer may sound difficult, but to reduce the chances of contracting the disease, all we have to do is to stay healthy through diet, exercise, and more importantly, through early detection. Though our efforts as a country is fighting cancer, in fighting cancer have been progressively steady despite its inherent challenges, much more needs to be done at an individual and national level. Thus the need for concerted efforts by both state and non-state actors. Through public information campaigns, we have witnessed the improved Awareness about cancer among Kenyans, leading to enhanced screening and early detection. We've also, as a country, Kenya, marked other major milestones in the war against the, the disease, including our success in building the capacity of our health workers to screen and manage the monster. Finally, on behalf of the service and on my own behalf, I wish to extend my heartmost 
Gratitude to Sandvik for the unmeasurable support extended to us on the understanding that collective commitment from all of us is a first key ingredient in making the war against cancer a success. With these few remarks, it's now my singular honor and duty to invite I think the program changed at this. I think we could do to invite the head of Sandvik Foundation to give her remarks. The, the, the program has changed because of yes, the changes. Welcome, Madam Colin. Secretary Wendy uh, CG DCGP uh, Florence Moody, uh, members of the uh, members of the Fourth Estate, uh, government senior officials, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's greetings from uh, Sandvik Bank and Sandvik Foundation. For us, it's a very very bright day in many ways. We are grateful to the sunshine that God has given us this morning. We are grateful that we are actually getting into a partnership with the Kenya prisons on many fronts. Uh, Madam CAS, when you made the request to stand with bank, as you did tell us when we were doing the briefing, you had asked for very specific things. And because we are a generous partner, we've decided to come and uh, partner with your institution in many ways. Uh, what we are bringing today, and uh, which will be announcing shortly, we, as has been announced by the DCGP, we are actually bringing many things. We come with a basket full of goods. The first thing is that, as has been said, we will be donating mattresses to support the cause of the prisons. Secondly, we are a bank that believes in the digital era. I think COVID has taught us that the future is digital and what we'll be donating today is a representation of what we want to do with the prisons, which is um, 20 computers and on the back of those 20 computers we want to train prison officials to become digitally survey. The prison officials can then onward train and this is something that we are doing in partnership with uh, Microsoft. It's a great partnership we have with Microsoft and the Africa Center for Women in ICT. And then third, we will be bringing in, uh, we are introducing a service under our health pillar for cancer screening. We believe this is something that we will partner with the Kenya prisons over the years to come, so it is just for us a symbolic representation. And one may ask, why are we doing this? Stamik, as most of you may not know, has been in Kenya for over 110 years. It has a long history in this country. It is a bank that believes that Kenya is our home, and Kenya being our home, we want to drive our growth. And what we've then been doing is very much support the Kenya government on multiple fronts. So last year during COVID, we partnered with the Ministry of Health, and uh, we, in partnership with some of our corporate clientele, we were able to bring in 192 ventilators, which almost doubled the ventilators that the country had. Beyond that, we have been in discussion in supporting the Ministry of Health and many other fronts. It is that same journey that led us to partner with the Population Services Kenya to look at what else we can do to support the Kenyan community. Beyond that, we are also partnering with the Kenya Healthcare Federation. A lot of the SMEs were affected last year by COVID. A lot of businesses had to shut down, and through the partnership we have with the Kenya Healthcare Federation, we then decided to help the SMEs reinvent themselves, and we conducted what we are calling digital marketing. So if you're running a clinic and you want to put your businesses online, you're able to advertise that I'm open from this hour to this hour, and therefore the doctors can consult. We have also been doing that with the, with the other SMEs at large. 
The other partnership I would want to mention here is a partnership that we have signed with the Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development. And this partnership is seeing us support SMEs that have greatly been affected by COVID. And uh, what we are doing under this partnership is one skill training. So we are introduced to the Ministry the same kind of interventions we are introducing to Kenya prisons today. And through that ministry, we've been able to reach quite a number of counties. So we have had engagements at county level. Thank you. We've had the engagement with county levels to say, let us do the digital training, let us do the cancer screening, and then we also say, let us see how we can help by these access markets. So for us today, uh, Madam CAS, ours is to say we are very, very happy that we are getting into this partnership, we consider it a long-term partnership. Any partnership we engage is a minimum of five years. So we believe that we are getting into a broad partnership with yourselves. We believe it's a beginning of a journey. We are going to start with the cancer screening through our partner PSK. It is something that we believe we want through your office to roll out across Kenya over the years. We are also going to start the digital training and in the digital training again, we will start here at the headquarters, but we also believe that we'll be able to get it done across Kenya where we have the prison's offices. Then the third thing is to say, we will also conduct the digital training. So without saying much for us from Stambik is to say it is a good day for us. I want to uh, really echo and thank our data team led by Silpa, Daktari, this has been something good. Our Chief Dada, Rose, again, thank you very much. I think it is through your efforts that Stambik is represented here today. It has been a lot of hard work to get it to where we are. But just to say thank you for opening the path. Thank you for making this possible. And thank you and saying that with Dada and the branch, we can take ourselves places. So on behalf of uh, Stambik, I would like now to welcome uh, the PSK CEO to just say a few words before then we hand over. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Pauline. Um, Madam Huff, uh, Winnie and of course the Deputy Commissioner. Standing leadership here and all protocols of that. Thank you for having us here today. I think uh, Pauline has said quite a bit, but I want to add a little bit from the health perspective because we are a public health organization. I am the CEO of PS Kenya, for Population Services Kenya. We've been around for over 30 years, partnering with the Ministry of Health in many fronts, from uh, managing of HIV to uh, malaria, uh, immunization, child wellness, among others. And of course, non-communicable diseases have become a very big issue in this country. I think um, for us, it's just to really have a running course on why it's important to get screened. We've seen cancer become a very big deal in Africa, and Kenya is not left behind. In fact, in Kenya, according to statistics, they say that um, the third cause of death is actually cancer. After, of course, the cardiovascular infection and infectious uh, infections that are communicable. And the most common ones uh, are actually breast, cervical, prostate, esophageal, and colorectal cancer in this country. Some are easier to screen and very uh, manageable as soon as we're able to detect early. Of course, others are a little bit more complicated. But I think uh, uh, the most important thing is for prevention that has been mentioned and of course ensuring that there is uh, early detection. There's been a lot of effort around this. The government of Kenya, the Ministry of Health has already been able to launch a couple of initiatives. In July 2020, there, as I'm sure some of you may know, there was a new cancer control strategy that was launched, which is a national effort to address this growing burden. Of course, we would want more resources to go into this, but they're not enough. Like, you know, most of our other issues around like uh, COVID and uh, malaria and HIV have had a huge investment, and that's why we made a lot of uh, movement. But for cancers, we are still not there. 
Sunspeak and PS Kenya came into this partnership almost a year ago, um, and with this uh, partnership, we really focus on screening a lot of uh, women and men to make sure that at least we have many people being aware of, of, of their status and being able to get uh, treatment early. We've gone around the country, screened about possibly close to 6,000 uh, women and men, and most importantly, of course, making sure that they have the right information because that's what really our job is. The right information, you, uh, you know how to pre prevent, and of course, where do you seek care in case you're positive of, uh, of a cancer and you need to be detected? How do you make sure that you get early treatment? That's very important for us. So the whole referral mechanism for us is very important that once you're aware, then what do you do about it and how soon can you do it? A lot of people, of course, are not aware um, as it was mentioned earlier, which is really uh, important for us to be able to scale that up and work through communities to make sure that people have the right information. And most importantly for us, the lessons we've learned in managing the communicable diseases like HIV and malaria really come to bear when we have to manage the non-communicable diseases. Because the same thing is just about making sure that we can demystify, deploy early screening and prevention as soon as possible, sensitize the communities like here where we are, where we are today, and make sure that information is passing down to as many people as possible. One of the things that we also know as a team is that even through this partnership, we are not even making a dent. But it's a very important start. Because once we do it, and, and we are able to screen as many people as possible, the most important thing as well is to rally a whole team and other organizations, government, funders, and other private sector as well to see this as a very important cause so that we can catalyze a movement that will help us be able to manage this burden because it's becoming a very big deal as I've mentioned more than all the other things that we've seen in the past of course corona is uh, one of the biggest but before that cancer is actually overtaking all the rest so for us it's really a rallying call uh, to make sure that all of us here today at least get screened um, get the information you need tell your families about it and of course, anybody in uh, uh, government or private sector or other organizations, again, really, we need to come together and be able to raise resources to this very worth, worth of. So thanks for having us here today. Um, very, uh, we are honored because it's really our day-to-day -day work. We like to help people prevent uh, illnesses as much as possible and prevent unnecessary death. Uh, we have today, of course, some of our providers from Tunza that will be helping with the screening. And whatever information that we need after that, of course, we are able to provide. So thank you for having us. We really appreciate this partnership. Thank you. Thank you. That is really powerful. At this juncture, it is now my singular honor and duty to invite our chief guest, Madam Winnie Bushu, the Chief Administrative Secretary, Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government, to give her address. Welcome, Madam. Karibuni sana, Madam, and thank you for your kind attention. The Deputy Commissioner General of Police, Madam Florence Omundi, the Head of Sandvik Foundation, uh, Madam Pauline Baya, the CEO of Population Service Kenya, Mrs. Joyce Wanderi, the Director of Non-Communicable Diseases, Nairobi Metropolitan, uh, Dr. Kibe, prison officials present, members of the Fourth Estate, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, I'm very pleased this morning because a conversation that started casually with my good friend, Madame Rose of Dada, she was um, actually, we were discussing other things other than assisting prison. And we found ourselves in the conversation discussing about children accompanying mothers in prison. And I asked her to give me mattresses because we have 
beds, enough beds in the women's prisons, but we do not have enough mattresses. So the beds are there, but they're not in use. And I'm trying to rally as much as possible to get all the beds having mattresses and enough bedding. This was supposed to come like three months ago, but I'm told that patients pay because we have ended up with much more than I actually went to request. So it gives me great pleasure to be here today during this occasion to receive on behalf of Kenya Prisons 20 computers. Mattresses were 300,000, cancer screening for our staff members, and also financial support. I think there is something that you did not mention that is also coming as a package, which I will talk about. Now, the ministry, uh, as a ministry, uh, interior, the Department of Prisons really is mandated to contain and, safe, and provide safe custody of inmates. Number two is to re, uh, rehab, rehabilitation and reform of offenders, and then administer justice, and then we are also responsible for taking care of children or the youth in postal institutions. Very critically, your contribution today is catering for the children who are accompanying their mothers of the age of four years and below. We are removing these children from sleeping on the floor and we are taking them to sleeping on the bed and making sure that we make their life more comfortable and as much as possible would like to make the life of children accompanying their parents to be as comfortable as children who are living ordinary lives outside prison. So we want to thank you for this contribution and to say that you have contributed immensely in our efforts as government to be able to provide humane treatment to our inmates. Number two, I think uh, Kenya prisons, I think we pride ourselves for being able to make sure that we have contained the COVID-19. And so far, since COVID started, we have only had 10 deaths in prison. I want to commend our officers. These people you see seated here, even the ones in the band, the ones seated there, our senior officers, they're the foot soldiers who have made sure that COVID-19 has not become a disaster in our prisons. For that, I would like to highly commend our prison officers who have made sure that we have kept our inmates safe. The, the other thing that has come with COVID-19 is the hearing of cases online. We have a total of 50,000 inmates, and cases are going on for, some, for those who are in remand. Others who have already been uh, uh, sentenced have cases that they are appealing, and these cases need to be had on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, with COVID-19, there has been huge reduction of listening to cases physically. That has led us to be able to move to the alternative of hearing these cases online. Of course, we were not prepared. We did not know that COVID was going to hit. And therefore, we did not have enough equipment and computers with cameras and speakers to be able to make sure that we hear these cases as quickly as we would like them had. Your contribution of the 20 computers is going to go a long way in ensuring that our inmates in custody have their cases heard on a regular basis. We also appreciate that you're also providing these computers for learning. The last time we were, two weeks ago, we were in Kisumu, Kisumu prison. And in the women's prison, the women in particular asked that they would like to, be, to have computers so that they are able to learn in preparing them to be able to be integrated back into society. Where they said that we are, we are now in the computer era and everything is computerized and they would like to increase their skills and knowledge on how to operate computers. So towards this end, your idea of online learning for inmates and sharing information and for them to be able to be computer li literate is indeed timely and we really do appreciate this gesture. 
In the area of cancer screening, we have a lot of people discovering that they have cancer at a very late stage. And this is because we have very little information on the importance of early screening and screening frequently. We do appreciate this effort from the uh, population services to be able to take this opportunity to create awareness about cancer screening. And not only are they creating awareness, but they are also going to do the cancer screening physically for the rest of the day, and I think frequently, so that we make this a continuous process for our prison, uh, for our prison um, service workers, so that they are continuously assessing themselves, so that they are able to get treatment at a timely, at a timely time. The last but not least, which um, I think has not been talked about, is the financial management and financial management towards access to financial aid. A lot of us do not understand financial management from a very early age, and through the discussions with Stanley, we have agreed that they're going to be able to put up training for our prison officers so that they are able to understand issues of money management, issues of stress, issues of uh, suicide are starting to present themselves within our prisons. And most of these stress-based illnesses are as a result of poor financial management or lack of understanding of how to access financial assistance and how to manage finances once you have gotten the financial assistance. So Sandvik has volunteered that they will provide training on financial management. They will also be able to help us to provide packages for our officers to be able to access loans that are manageable and that are quick and that are not difficult. A lot of us train to be able to access bank loans because we do not have enough uh, security to safeguard ourselves on the loans, but there are uh, proposals on how our officers can be able to access affordable loans from standing and to be able to help them to manage how to do these repayments without fear of uh, accessing these loans and therefore developing themselves. So finally, once again, I wish to acknowledge and to thank Sandy and your partner, Dada, and also the Population Service Kenya for partnering with the Correctional Department in empowering, rehabilitating, and reintegration of inmates back to society. We look forward to continued cooperation. Thank you, and may God bless you richly and reward you abundantly. Thank you very much. At this point in time, we want to have or request the cast to receive the donation from Stanley. And uh, just as the DCCB has alluded, we have uh, a check. I'm going to double check. The, 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 the real check is not coming. Uh, to, to signify the small check that will give you cast in an envelope. And this is for, 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 for display. And therefore, I would like to call Madam DCG, CAS and the CEO of Standing, plus the uh, uh, Population Service Kenya, to, to take advantage position in front here as the check is being presented. I am raising the monotony you guys are realizing from <laughs> So, uh, who, who, who is giving and who is receiving? Cassie is receiving. Cassie is receiving. So, where is the giver supposed to be? Yes, the order is that way. Yes. Right. Good. Yes. Now, Dr. Kisbuli, come and flank the mother. This is easier. So that uh, she doesn't look lonely. Right. Now, now we are two. Now. 
The CEO of Stanley can speak to the, to the check. Speak to the check. Uh, Madam CAS, as uh, we have committed, this is a small token of a uh, donation to Kenya prisons. As you did say in your speech, it's supposed to go towards buying of mattresses for the children that are in uh, the prisons with their mothers. And we believe, as we did commit, we'll be able to do more. So I appreciate our small token, one of many coming your way. Thank you very much. Is it on now? Okay, so DCG, this is a check to you. Please make sure you buy the mattresses. And make sure that the beds that don't have mattresses are you equally distributed in the country to the women's prisons so that we have more and more. Please prioritize the prisons where there are children and they do not have mattresses as yet. Thank you. And thank you very much for this very good gesture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chief Administrative Secretary. I want to make a commitment that as Kenya Prison Service, we will do due diligence. And I want to promise that this check will go to the intended purpose. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Kass, there's a request from members of the fourth estate that they want you, CEO Stanbing, CEO uh, PSK and DCC, to kindly move closer and remove your masks for, for the photo. I hope nobody had me move closer. Yes, it will be dated 19, 1999 before COVID broke. Yes. Okay. Are you good to go? Hmm? The ladies will know. Yes, yes, yes. Now the two. Yes, the two. Yes. Now, uh, Dr. Kisuli. Madam is saying you were supposed to receive this check from, from her. Hmm? You are refusing. <laughs> so from there, I'm um, told uh, there's a demonstration of, uh, of the computers. So Madam Kass will request you to walk to the table where there are computers for the demonstration. And CEO Stubbing can do the other bit of explaining what is happening there. settings. Also the Microsoft Office will come provided for the users. The Office will have uh, all the applications including Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint. 
These are the basic applications which are used for creating spreadsheets, for calculations, writing letters, and also email functionality. They will also come with uh, internet connection through LAN. This will facilitate e-learning for the users of the machines. The machines will also come fitted with uh, all the accessories, including a mouse and a keyboard. They'll also have ports for the microphone, uh, headphones, uh, and other accessories as well. Yes, we are providing plate. Yes. Yes, we can but what we wanted to say about the PAS is that uh, the machines, as has been said by my colleague, we have loaded Microsoft Office and we have loaded uh, Office 365, yeah. And what that does is that it, we have given a lifetime license. So from the prison side, there will be no need to renew every year the Microsoft license. Because of the partnership, as long as these computers are working, there is a license to operate. So you, it will not be going to the budget requests. So that is the first one. The second thing is that we've already, uh, while the training takes place for the inmates and the officers of the prisons, they'll be able to train themselves. Now the training here starts from, this is a computer, this is a mouse. You know what you think about the two women? The basics of what is a computer, the parts of a computer, all the way to artificial intelligence. If you want to teach yourself coding, it is there. If you want to teach yourself uh, the usual stuff that we hear nowadays, it is there. If you don't know how to make a PowerPoint presentation, and you have to go and make a PowerPoint presentation, you can teach yourself. So we'll start with a training the trainer. So we will work with your with team to get a number of people to be trained as trainers. Those people can then train others. Those that have a bit of understanding about technology, they can go straight to www.futuredigital.com and then they can train themselves. It also has a application training. And I have seen there that you have business enterprise. So maybe those could also be part of the users of the training. How do you start a business? How do you market a business? So we are giving you a whole suite of packages under the digital training. Thank you. So as we organize ourselves for the other consignment to, to be set up, the the Magreza bands. Do I see?
So, so once this process is done, us has kindly requested the seat, the 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 partners to join up for this morning to have a seat and the company will be seated. Once this is done, then when us has done the initial round, then the screening will be open to all of us. Please respond.